By 1950, four million television sets were sold. Harry Como was number one. I mean, families were flocking to the suburbs. And Americans were being lulled into a feeling of comfort and well-being. Speaking of comfort and well-being, look at my new boyfriend. He's beyond Baldwin. I mean, we're pushing the Keanu envelope here. On top of the babe factor, Devin's dad runs a record company. So my friends and I are seeing all the new groups. Dion, what does Red Menace mean to you? Oh, well, usually around Christmas time, all the designers make everything in red when remarkably few people look acceptable in it. We're talking about the Red Menace of the 1950s. Oh, Miss Geist, that was way before my time. Is anyone paying attention? Murray, what does Red Menace mean to you? Wasn't that that kid that used to get on Mr. Wilson's nerves? <laughs> Cher, what are your thoughts on the Cold War? She's like totally against it. <laughs> How obvious that the country would look for leadership in a father figure, a war hero. So in 1952, Dwight D. Eisenhower and his wife Mamie occupied the White House. Ew! Oh, no, Look at that haircut. <laughs> what were they thinking? It's horrifying. Sean, we had a skinhead president. <laughs> Yo, I like Ike. I can't believe Ike would leave Tina for her. D, guess who Devin's dad is getting to play at the Tropical Fiesta Dance? Who? Dog's Eye View? <gasps> they are off the hook. Oh, Cher, this relationship is way beneficial. McCarthy, he started what was called the Blacklist. Artists, actors, writers. Wait, 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 homework. Read pages 365 to 372. Communist hysteria and McCarthyism. Miss Geis, wasn't some of the anti-communist fervor also anti-Semitism, like the Rosenberg trial? Good point, Harrison. Everyone also read 371 to 379. Yeah, that's right. Harrison is the intellectual type, but his enthusiasm sometimes causes more homework. Bonus, more homework on my tennis lesson night. Take a mite all, Amber. I love Stella Tennant's bangs in the eye, do. I wish I could get my hair to stay in my eyes. I think for the Tropical Fiesta, I'm gonna dye my hair that new red like Linda Evangelista has. Well, I'm considering the Nadja shag. I'm just gonna do a simple Yasmin. Oh, that looks so pretty on Good you. Good choice. I know. Okay, time out. Who is Linda? Yasmin and Nadja. Yeah, and how'd you know these people and we never met them? Duh, we don't know them. They're supermodels. Da -da 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 -da. Supermodels! Hey, Sean, I wonder if you could kill a supermodel with kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Is Def Jam over yet? Uh, is this seat taken? No, sit down. Guys, scoot over. What are you reading? Uh, it's Death and Dying by Kubla Ross. Okay, what do Keebler elves have to do with dying? <laughs> no, Kubler Ross. She believed people responded to death in stages. So denial, anger, bargaining, and then acceptance. Well, that's way interesting. No, that's way stupid. Look, I fall off a building. The first couple of stories, I'm going, oh, no, I just didn't fall. The second couple of stories, I'm going, you know what? I hate falling. And then right before I hit the ground, I'm going, please don't let me hit the ground. I'll do all my homework. Forever, I promise. And then it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna die now. This is the way it's gonna be. I'm ready for it. Hmm. You're telling me that's what happens. Well, I think maybe she meant people who didn't fall off buildings. People who had more time to think about it. What was the name of that book again? Um, Kubler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hey, you are so studious. You know, you just school. Oh, Devin. <gasps> oh. Mm. I'll prove more true than those who have more cunning to be strange. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Are they good diva? Devin, what's the... Well, thank um. you. Mm. While Amber and Dion plan their dance ensembles, I was stressing over Keebler Ross's book. Like, what if anything <laughs> happened to Daddy? I was way unhappy with his diet and tense lifestyle. Hello. Hello, Dr. Lovett. I want to schedule Daddy's checkup, and even though he won't want to do the treadmill test, make sure he takes it. Uh, should I go with my Versace? Are you forgetting the strap debacle of the spring dance? Oh. You know, I could wear my Elia, but what if I want to dance? Mm, or sit? Or breathe? 
Oh my God, my Vivian Westwood. I mean, it's seasons and seasons old, but I've never worn it. Oh, it's perfect for a fiesta. It's green, it's got these little thatch touch details. <sighs> Makes me feel very tropical. <gasps> With the new pastel nails and a pair of vintage slingbacks. Oh, I just love mixing decades. <gasps> this dress is perfect for you. Oh, it's so tropical. But you must change your hair. Oh, this man. dress is screaming chunky layers. I, I don't know, a haircut? Oh, Cher, it's been multiple eons since you've reinvented yourself. Has Madonna taught us nothing? <sighs> Cher, I'm at a point in my life where I just have to be true to my inner feelings. Well, of course, Tacky. I mean, you've been my hairstylist for years. I totally trust you. An A-line shag, a geometric bob. Whatever you feel is best. You don't understand. I need something deeper in my life. I can't find fulfillment just doing haircuts anymore. You can't? No. That's why I've decided that from now on, I'm going to be a colorist. Colorist? Someday, when you want streaks, you'll understand. Couldn't you do just one last cut? I can't go back now. It wouldn't be fair to you or me. But I have mentioned you to Kaffeen, the new hot stylist. He does all the supermodels. You can call some of his clients for recommendations. I know you'll find happiness with him. Veronica Webb? Oh, how nice of you to call back. No problem. I understand you need a haircut. It's a life or death situation. You have to have caffeine do your hair. Since he cut my hair, I've been on ABC, BBC, VH1, MTV, virtually all the initials. I'm telling you, Hair can make you or break you. Thanks for the recommendation. And by the way, you, see, you are beats, my favorite the model beatlets, spokesman. They had such a passion to get it all out, to get it all down. They didn't even care about grammar or punctuation. All they cared about was getting down onto paper as quickly as possible exactly how they felt, as fast as possible, without stopping. Now, share. Yes, Mr. Hall? Can you tell us what stream of consciousness means? It's when Cher pierces her ears and her brains shoot out. <laughs> no, you see, stream of consciousness is the way the mind works, really. Not the way we think it works, the way it really Dee, works. all these supermodels totally recommend this caffeine guy. <gasps> the caffeine? What? Caffeine is going to take you as a client. Apparently, he can squeeze me in very early before school. Okay. Tell him about me. I'll go anytime he wants. Do you think I should go? Duh. Hey, look at this. Where'd this come from? With the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover and prove an ass. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Maybe someone's trying to tell me not to go see caffeine. Sure, I don't think that's for you. It's probably from last period. Let's go. Look, I'm keeping it in. If you think it's so disgusting, you can just kiss the lower lip, or you can reach underneath and just unscrew the back, okay? I got to go. My hair is really fine, so I was thinking that... You were you... thinking? No, you don't think. You just said, I am caffeine. What is your name? Cher Horowitz. Mm -hmm. Cher, you know what we have to talk about today is hair. So let me look at your face. What shape face you have is like a big ham. So maybe we do something like a little pigtail or a little something, I don't know. Oh, God, I have the idea. But maybe you're too afraid. I'm not afraid. I was in fourth grade once. Mm -hmm. Other words, stories about grade four, Cher. We're already grown up now, we're in high school. Okay, I'll give you the collab Shabab. Shabab? Yes, this is the most brilliant shape. It's a combination of the shag and the bob. Last week, I gave it to Linda Evangelista. You want to know what makes her nostrils dilate? It's my shaving cut that I do on the back of her head. Okay, I just don't want it. So I have another client named Cher. The singer Cher. She's much, much older than you, but she looks about your age. She used to come in years ago. One day she brought in a nice little boy. I said, do you want to play, eat something? And she said, no, that's my boyfriend. So do you know who was here the other day? Tom Cruise. And he sits down and says, Caffeine, can you please give me something exciting and dynamic and full of life and color? 
And I said, Tom, I cannot give you a personality. But... So you know who was here, the full house twin? And they said to me, Kavi, we want to reinvent ourselves as serious actresses. I said, ladies, I can damage your hair, but the responsibility to act like cigarette smoking smuts, that's up to you. And this is perfect. Stunning. And more. Don't you love it? Gorgeous, Kefi. What was going on? I looked totally to the curb, and yet everyone was acting like I was Major Betty. Maybe I was stressing needlessly. What happened to you here? It's blow-dried funny. No, Sean. It's blow-dried funny. Uh, you didn't tell him about me, did you? It's perfectly normal for your hair to go into shock after a first cut. I know, and he blow-dried it wrong. Yeah, exactly. Something really trippy was happening in my head. Like, the part of my brain that has impeccable taste knew that my haircut reeked. But another part of my brain kept insisting that nothing was wrong. Hi, honey. Hi. Oh. I can't wait to go to the Joan Osborne concert. With you? Yeah. Yeah, uh, um, I'm gonna have to cancel. I had something come up at home. Oh. Okay, sure. Remember that big hole in my navel after I got it pierced? How can we ever forget? It's indelibly ingrained in our memory. <laughs> you look like a donut. Well, Dr. Fleming took a tiny piece of skin from my inner thigh and filled it in. Mm -hmm. He's the first hole removal doctor. It looks like I was never pierced. Yes. Hey, what's the matter? Devin canceled our date. He said that something came up at home. Well, sure, that can mean a lot of things. Maybe his mother forgot it was his father's weekend. Or it was his mother's boyfriend's birthday, or his father's new wife, or one of his half-brothers. It's my hair. Sure, you're bugging. It's all in your head. You're right. Oh, what's this? <laughs> well, there was my answer. Like they say, denial is more than a river in Egypt. I had to face the hideous truth. I had gone from being a Betty to a total Mamie. There wasn't a styling product available that could stand up to this hideous shabab. It's just like Harrison's death book by the Keebler Elves. First I was denying, and now I'm ballistic. I'm totally staging. They say that Misery likes to have company over. Dee, I am so fully aware of how gruesome this haircut is. I wish I could grab caffeine and yank out his hair. Ooh, you're venting. That's way healthy, Cher. Oh, I have something for you. Oh, my box toad sling backs. I bought them for the dance, but I won't be needing them. You're going to the dance. Who'd want to go with a Mamie? Error. Somebody thinks you're pretty cute. Nice gesture, Dee, but acutely transparent. It's not from me, Cher. I found it outside your door. Was ever woman in this humor wooed? How come I keep getting these trippy notes? Maybe you have a secret admirer. I decided to throw myself at the mercy of Umberto Jose and see if he could do some damage control on my shabab. <laughs> no, 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 no. Impossible. That's a caffeine cup. No person can fix a caffeine cup. Oh, please. You're my last and only hope. <laughs> That's what they all say. Believe me that. But Mr. Umberto, please. I'll pay you anything. Oh, money, money, money. What's money? How huh, money? 
I'll send you all my dad's clients. They have lots of hair. Suddenly I realized I was bargaining, just like Harrison said. Perhaps you can get me a ticket to a concert. How about no? not fed with the same food, hurt with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases, healed by the same means, warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer? If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? Class, what was Shakespeare's point in Shylock's speech? Murray? Yes. Murray, uh, is it possible you could put that person on hold so we could hear your thoughts on Shakespeare? Oh, Mr. Hall, you read that so eloquently. I mean, I was thinking maybe you should read for the rest of the period so we can properly ponder. Oh, yes, far be it for me to prevent a ponder. Amber? What? Dion? What was Shylock saying? Anyone? Cher? Um, Mr. Hall, that forelock guy, is, isn't he, like, saying that... Even if a person is flawed and has a bad haircut and are shunned by their classmates, that they're still human and have feelings. Cher, that is actually an approximation of the correct answer. Mr. Hall, that's exactly what I was going to say. Well, delighted to hear it. Good answer. So, uh, anyone else have anything to say on the... Uh... Well, that's all for today. So, uh, finish the play by tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds. Oh, that one is way incomprehensible. Mr. Hall, you know those speeches on tickling and bleeding? Yes. Well, it reminds me of all these notes I've been getting, and I was hoping that maybe you could help me find a connection between them. Oh, that's very perceptive, Cher. These are all quotations from uh, Shakespeare's plays. You know, I run an informal discussion group after school on Shakespeare's works. Extra credit, and we even have a picnic at the end of the year if anyone shows up. Ask Harrison about it. Harrison? Oh, yes, he's one of our most enthusiastic members. Here, I'll get you a form. say that time heals all haircuts. And it's true. When my hair went out of shock, it was perfectly fine. But I learned something from Shakespeare and Harrison. Love is love, no matter what alterations you do.